This is the one universal consensus accepted institutional grade crypto asset in the world. There won't be another one this decade. No other crypto token is going to achieve institutional acceptance this decade. Bitcoin is the only crypto that's going to cross the chasm. You could see the writing on the wall when the spot ETF of Bitcoin was approved in January. By the end of May, you'll know that Ethereum is not going to be approved. And when Ethereum is not going to be approved, sometime this summer it'll be very clear to everyone that Ethereum is deemed a crypto asset security, not a commodity. After that, you're going to see that Ethereum, BNB, Solana, Ripple, Cardano, everything down the stack is just a crypto asset security unregistered. None of them will ever be wrapped by a spot ETF. None of them will be accepted by Wall Street. None of them will be accepted by mainstream institutional investors as crypto assets. There's no second best crypto. Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. According to MicroStrategy founder Michael Saylor, Bitcoin is the one true crypto asset that will make it. Saylor believes that Bitcoin is set to skyrocket while everything else is bound to collapse. To him, Bitcoin is the first and only crypto asset that will experience mass adoption. It is the original cryptocurrency before all else. At the 2024 Bitcoin for Corporations conference hosted by MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor shares his latest predictions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. He also explains why now is the best time to invest in this asset. Let us now watch Michael Saylor as he shares his profound Bitcoin insights. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Make sure to stick around until the end of this video as Michael Saylor explains why Bitcoin is the best opportunity in our lifetime. Thanks and enjoy. As the other crypto assets fail because of competition, right, as, the, as the, you know, Solana competes with Ethereum, competes with whatever, as they fail due to regulation, as they get shut down or they get, tar they get labeled unregistered securities by regulators, as they fail due to entropy, just the complexity of what they're attempting to accomplish, and they crash or they get hacked or they unwind, or as people move away from their projects, as, as those failures take place, all the users in the crypto ecosystem and all the capital in the crypto ecosystem is going to flow into the best network. It's going to flow into Bitcoin because Bitcoin has 100% crypto acceptance. If you talk to everybody in the world uh, and you say, well, do you like crypto? Yeah, I do. Well, is Bitcoin legitimate? Which, what's the most secure, what's the most credible crypto network? Well, it's Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the O positive, right? It's the universal donor, right? Everybody can't agree on anything else if you talk to people in the crypto ecosystem and you ask them whether or not they like Solana better than this or Tether better than that or NFTs better than this, they can't agree on that. That's competitive, that's controversial, uh, that's confusing. Everybody agrees on this one thing, Bitcoin. Bitcoin will be around for the long term. The industry was built on it. It'll be around long after most of the other industry participants are gone. Well, Bitcoin's not just the best crypto brand. It's the best investment brand. There is no second best investment brand. The people know about the dollar, but dollar's not an investment unless you're in a country with the currency collapsing. And if the currency's not collapsing, then you need a different investment. Okay, Bitcoin's the most widely held investment asset in the world. Right? People are coming to grips with that. This is the one thing everybody recognizes. So the question is why? Why? It's not the first. It's not the only. There's two and a half million copies. Why? It's because of the immaculate conception. What is the immaculate conception? By the way, it's such a simple idea, and yet everybody that's copied Bitcoin hasn't got this simple idea in their head. Satoshi created a way. He gave it away, and he went away, walked away. That's the idea. There's not a single major company in the world where someone created the company, gave it to the world, and walked off. And in fact, if you look at every other crypto asset, there is no Satoshi, right? In fact, 
the way you know that they're, they're not commodities is they're all arguing that they're commodities. Satoshi's not arguing anything. Satoshi went away, gave it to you, right? And, and this is the essence of it. If something's going to be a commodity, there, there can't be a beneficiary. Satoshi gave up control of the protocol. Satoshi gave up the Satoshi coins. Satoshi stopped trying to influence the network. It was a gift to the world. That's what makes it an asset without an issuer. If you go and make a list of the next 100 cryptos and you go down the list, you're going to be hard pressed to find that. But that's a simple asset test. By the way, it's a lot easier than the Howey test. You know, if you wanted to figure out whether you're a security, if you created something, did you give it all away to someone else? Did you never sell it? And are you gone and not arguing over it? And then maybe it is. So I, I have simple advice for someone that wants to create a digital commodity, right? Give it away and walk away. Bitcoin is not just the best digital commodity. It's the best commodity, right? Bitcoin's the only commodity in the world, A, that's digital. Everything else is a physical commodity. And because it's digital, it's fixed in supply. Everything else is physical, therefore not fixed in supply. That makes Bitcoin superior to gold, and gold is the king of commodities. Where are we now? Bitcoin's on a path of evolution from the idealist to the institutions. The first dozen years, it was the, it was the era of the idealists, the cypherpunks, you know, the libertarians, the entrepreneurs, the crypto cowboys, right? You know the story. It's been written about. People will, will probably make many more movies about it. What was 2020 to 2024? The crazy years, right? Starting with COVID, ending with the approval of the spot ETFs. It was the crazy years. What's going to happen to crypto? Who's going to control crypto? Will it be regulated, right? Will, will Bitcoin be banned? Will it be hacked? Will it be copied? We resolved that in those four years. And now we've come out of the crazy years. Now we're in the era of institutional adoption. Institutions, corporations, and investors are going to define the future of this network from $1 trillion to $100 trillion. And that's appropriate, right? From 20, oh, 2008 to 2020, the network went from zero to 100. 150 billion. And between 2020 and 2024, it went from the 150 billion to 1.4 trillion. So you can see how this is lining up. Of course, institutions and corporations are going to join this network. They have all the money. It's a monetary network, right? At the end of the day, you have a monetary network, then people with all the money that run the money, that need the money, are going to join the network. The securities, or Bitcoin-backed securities, are being issued worldwide, everywhere, at an accelerating rate. This year, right, you saw an explosion of spot ETFs in the US, but look at all the ETFs in Hong Kong. Look at all the ETFs in Europe. This is the beginning, right? You're going to see more and more and more. Every one of these companies is joining the ecosystem. They're securitizing. And, and it's not just this. MicroStrategy security, options are security. There are options and derivatives on the securities. There are bonds on the securities. This is exploding. It will continue. Every Bitcoin miner is a security. One day there will be 1,000 securities or 10,000 securities all backed by Bitcoin. Same with corporate treasuries. Bitcoin treasuries are, are growing rapidly. Right? They keep this chart up every month. It's never declining. The chart's not ever decreasing. It only goes one way. Bitcoin is a capital ratchet. It's a, it's a one-way ratchet, right? Archimedes said, give me a lever long enough and a place to stand, and I can move the world. Bitcoin is the place to stand. The leverage is coming via all these securities, all these corporate treasuries. Right? And the leverage is getting to be extreme. The more leverage that gets put on this network, the bigger the network's going to get. A quick news intermission before we proceed with more of Michael Saylor. Former BitMEX CEO Arthur Hayes believes Bitcoin has reached a local bottom and predicts a slow upward movement over the next few months. 
In a recent blog post, Hayes commented on the recent market decline, stating that it unfolded as he anticipated. Despite Bitcoin dropping to approximately $58,600 earlier in the week, Hayes expects it to rebound above $60,000 and then fluctuate between $60,000 to $70,000 until August. He attributed the 12% decline to various factors, including the U.S. tax season, concerns over Federal Reserve decisions, the Sell the News event following the Bitcoin halving, and a decrease in spot Bitcoin exchange-traded fund inflows. Hayes anticipates that the crypto markets will gradually recover from the recent downturn, fueled by increased dollar liquidity from the Federal Reserve's quantitative tightening taper and the U.S. Treasury's debt issuance plans. He sees this as a form of stealth money printing, which could positively impact high-risk assets like cryptocurrencies. Other analysts, including Jeff Ross from Vailsha Capital Management, also foresee a sideways market in the coming months, viewing it as an accumulation opportunity. Matrixport, an institutional crypto brokerage, echoes this sentiment, suggesting that Bitcoin typically moves sideways for four to five months post-halving based on historical patterns. Despite Bitcoin's recovery to $59,804 at the time of writing, it remains down 19% from its mid-March all-time high. Now, here are more insights from Michael Saylor. Look, Bitcoin's the best idea. There's no more powerful idea than the digital transformation of capital. Right? What are you going to do with this? Well, you're going to improve your life, your family, your product, your service, your company, your institution, your government, or your world. Right? Improve them all. Right? It's pretty straightforward how you do it. You've got pure economic energy. It's not the solution to every problem in the world. It's just the solution to half the problems in the world. But every other problem in the world, you're going to need economic energy or economic power to solve it. And this is how you harness and channel that power. No force on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. This is an idea. Its time has come. It's unstoppable. What's making news on Sunday afternoon? Bitcoin. When there's, a, when there's a scare of a war, what's crashing? What can you sell? Bitcoin. When you decide the war's not coming, what can you buy? Bitcoin. What is there to tweet about, talk about? Bitcoin. What do you cover on YouTube on a Saturday or Sunday or midnight on, on the East Coast? Bitcoin. Right? Everybody's got something to say about it. What is it? Well, and why is it? Well, first of all, it's the most widely held asset in the world because it's a, it's a standardized economic unit. Right? I mean, maybe we own watches, but we own different watches. Maybe we own buildings. We own different buildings. Right? Maybe your building is worth more in Paris, but how does that help my building in Los Angeles? We're not on the same team. We're not on team building. Right? We're not on team watch. You know, we're, you know and, and, and good luck, you know, trying to invest in, like, Apple stock in Nigeria, right? And so what is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin's the economic solution to everybody. It's a global economic solution to billions of people, right? And what has it become? It's become cool. Bitcoin's cool. It's useful. It's global. It's standard. There's a standard investment brand. It's called Bitcoin. It's always interesting. It's egalitarian. You can buy a billion dollars worth of it, and it's a pretty good idea to buy a billion, but you can buy $23 worth of it. And if you look at the wealthy in the world, they buy buildings. But, you know, how's a cab driver in Nigeria supposed to buy a fraction of a building, right? How's it, how does it impact the other 7.9 billion people that can't afford a building, right? This is egalitarian capital, egalitarian property, and it's prestigious, right? So this is the ultimate luxury brand. You know, people used to buy the nice watch, so they figured they could sell it if they ever needed uh, to eat or pawn it, right? But you'd much rather have Bitcoin in your watch. Bitcoin's the best digital commodity. There's no second best digital commodity. What is a digital commodity? It's the only crypto in the world recognized as an asset without an issuer by all major regulators. 
by all major regulators. Okay, the Chinese recognize it, the Russians recognize it, right? The enemies of the U.S. recognize it, the, you know, in Singapore, in the UAE, in the U.S., in Brazil, everywhere. Do you agree with Michael Saylor's perspective that Bitcoin is the one true crypto asset destined for mass adoption? Or do you believe in the potential of other cryptocurrencies? Share your thoughts and join the discussion in the comment section below. If you found some value in today's video, we would appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button. Lastly, if you would like to be updated with all of our future updates, please tick that notification bell. Your support encourages us to create more content on the latest relevant news in crypto. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you in our next video.